Welcome to this new episode of CNS Dialogues for Sustainable Development, a special CNS series presenting insightful and thought-provoking interviews with leaders to accelerate progress towards attaining the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030, where no one is left behind. And ending AIDS by 2030 is one such target, as well as ending tuberculosis, amongst the other targets. And we have just 133 months left to do so. Are we on track? Let us hear more from our spe guest speaker on site from the 12th National Conference of the AIDS Society of India being held in Chennai. This episode of CNS Dialogues features a very special guest and we are indeed honored to have with us Dr. Bilali Kamara, who is the UNAIDS Country he Director for India. Uh, he is a medical epidemiologist and has also served as UNAIDS Country Director for Nigeria and Angola. And I have heard he's a multilinguist. So welcome, Dr. Kamara, to our show. Thank you. Merci. How many languages do you speak? <laughs> I'm speaking uh, more or less uh, four and uh, six, uh, four foreign languages and uh, another three million uh, African languages. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, and Bilala, uh, Bilali, where are we in terms of HIV prevention and treatment? In terms of achieving the sustainable development goal of ending AIDS by 2030, also in terms of the 1990-90 UN AIDS goal for 2020. Very good. Thank you very much for uh, that question. Uh, I will say, in general, India has done very, very well uh, in terms of uh, HIV prevention and care and treatment from, two, I will say, from 2000 to 2010. Mm -hmm. We really have done uh, a very, very quick impact. Mm -hmm. But uh, from 2010 to now, the impact is slowing down. And uh, it is slowing down because it is understandable. It is uh, just uh, that we have to reach out to the uh, hard to reach we have to take care of the one who maybe do not come to us, and we have really to see what has changed in uh, our way of living, and that is critical and it is really important. Uh, therefore, two years ago, we have had a very uh, important meeting at national level to look at HIV prevention programs, to really see how better we can shape and reshape uh, the HIV response in India, because that is critical, because you are doing if you want the same thing for the past 10 years, yes, it has had an impact, but things have changed, and now we have to change with things. And the reality has changed, we have to change with the reality. It means simply that we have put our heads together to really look at where we can expand and where we can reduce or even abandon and to see really what are the new strategies which we have really to put in place, especially looking at the new infections, because that is critical Mm -hmm. It is the important step to really achieve any target we want to achieve in uh, terms of infectious diseases. Mm -hmm. Elimination control, and uh, that is critical uh, as we move forward. And uh, we came away out with, uh, under NACO's leadership with uh, many, many good uh, uh, suggestions, which include uh, actually going uh, beyond the facilities, reaching out to people where they are living. It means going also through the social media, because uh, the social media is used, uh, and uh, if, if you want, uh, by everybody. And then looking also at the virtual space, because we know that many people, uh, especially in the key populations, uh, are meeting in uh, the virtual, virtual space. That means Facebook, it means uh, uh, the websites, and uh, to really see how better we can uh, also occupy uh, and uh, get uh, the message uh, at that level. And uh, meanwhile, of course, we have to take care of the one who are uh, living with the, dis the, the, the disease. And in that area, I have really to congratulate again uh, India for two very important steps which uh, they have materialized in terms of really helping people to come out, to feel, uh, to feel easy with mm -hmm. uh, the process. And uh, that protective, uh, if you want, platform uh, through the HIV Act and at uh, the end of the Section 377 uh, last year, were really very, very good steps in the right direction, uh, which have helped people, especially the key population, to say somewhere uh, the uh, country 
my people are taking care of myself or are taking care of me. So those are important steps which have happened. But what is certainly important in terms of 2020, 20, uh, in terms of uh, the 20 mm. targets, mm -hmm. the 1990-90 by uh, 2020, okay. we have done some progress. We have really done some progress. We are pushing. And uh, we came up with uh, innovative ways also to fast track uh, testing. Because what is important, as I said again yesterday, is it is not the number of people I have tested, it is the number of people tested who are positive. Yes. Because that is the major mm -hmm. uh, criteria. We want to identify 90% of people in mm -hmm. HIV. Yes. That is the way we have to really focus uh, mm -hmm. our attention on. And we have been able really to move uh, with new strategies in testing, including um, um, talking about self-testing, talking about community-based testing, talking about index testing, to really see how better we can get testing closer to people. And uh, we have moved uh, uh, in that area, as well as uh, in the area of treatment. We have had uh, many changes. The differentiated care models were uh, introduced to really reduce the burden of, uh, the, 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 if you want, on uh, people living with HIV AIDS. If you have to come every month yeah. to take your medication, or you want you have to come every three months to take your medication, there is a difference. So we are really trying to push for that. Uh, the multi-month dispensation is another area where we are really pushing for. If somebody is regular, somebody is stable, somebody is really working with you for two years, three years, and you see that really that person is uh, doing well, mm -hmm. it is important to trust the person and uh, give that person also the possibility. Because we know bringing people up to services uh, many times or often is not really good. And we are looking also to community-based uh, organizations, uh, civil society organizations, to see how they also can uh, be part of uh, the, the, the process, meaning simply that we have uh, 30 people, 40 people, around one civil society organization who can come at the right time, mm -hmm. because generally people work, people go to uh, do uh, their, uh, how to say it, the business uh, during the day, and that is the time of people, uh, facilities also are open. So generally we are missing uh, our people, or they have to stop what they are doing to come to see us. So those are issues which we are really looking at, and uh, trying to facilitate again, make it easy for uh, our people who are on treatment, because it is lifelong treatment, and we cannot really not to take those into consideration. That is where we are at, and uh, for the viral load, I'm uh, really pleased that uh, in 2018, uh, uh, the uh, PPP was launched, which means really the public-private pa partnership, mm -hmm. and uh, to really provide uh, viral load testing to uh, people living with HIV. And uh, it is true that we are not saying for everybody for the moment, but what uh, has been uh, the important piece is really to get priority groups identify them. People who have been under treatment, under single dose nevirapine, for example, are priority group. People who have been on treatment for a long time are priority group. And uh, we are really slowly trying to identify those and uh, helping them to get access to viral load testing. But I'm quite sure that uh, in the next, uh, uh, I have discussed with NACO, and mm. in the next uh, year, we will be able to really to expand it and uh, get uh, uh, it made available to almost everybody. So that is an important step in the right direction. And the good news so far is that the one who we were worried about, the priority groups who have been um, uh, tested, I'm not saying all of them have been tested, but the majority who have been tested have really shown that the viral load suppression is uh, uh, achieved and uh, it is really uh, above the 70%. And uh, in terms of uh, the testing also, as yesterday you have seen uh, from NACO's data, all of uh, the two 90s, we are mm. close to the 80 percent. And uh, now the big revolution which we are trying to bring in is to really look at to the 15 state which represent 90 percent of the HIV burden in uh, India, to focus on those, but even to go beyond those 15 states to really look at the district, mm. which district in those states are the most affected. Mm. So that again we can focus uh, in, in a granular way our attention to those, uh, uh, how to say, those districts as much as possible. That way, as you know, India is uh, not uh, only a country, it is really a continent. That way we can really uh, focus as much as possible on where it mattered the most. And if we can do that, I'm quite sure we will be able to really move forward. And uh, for the prevention of malvitrogenic transmission, we are moving in that direction because we have uh, tested, if you want, uh, 
close to 22 million uh, pregnant women, mm -hmm. but we still are at 62% uh, coverage. As I said at the beginning, mm -hmm. testing uh, people is not the, m the point, uh, but testing the right people is really the most important. And uh, that's where we are at. And uh, we are really moving also at the district level. We have been able to really look at uh, those 15 states and looking at uh, the districts which are uh, priority districts, the meaning high burden district, we'll focus on those to saturate those as much as possible. And as soon as we do that, we continue with, uh, uh, if you want, uh, the medium uh, burden uh, district, uh, we will saturate those and then uh, the low burden district will come. But meanwhile, we are, we are really uh, trying to share a little bit the responsibilities, meaning UNICEF, UNH, and uh, are really focusing uh, the attention on uh, the high burden district. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, PLAN and SATI and uh, NACO, of course, the Minister of Health itself, etc., will continue to provide their services where it matters, uh, also on a routine basis. Mm -hmm. So that way we believe we can complement each other, we can uh, support each other and making sure that really, uh, while we are pushing for the high burden, uh, they are continuing to provide the services uh, to the rest of the district. And when we saturate those high burden uh, districts, I'm quite sure that we will be able again to join forces to continue and move forward and uh, move forward in the right direction. And another good uh, practice which we have uh, so far is uh, uh, the UN has put its forces together in Gujarat. Mm. Uh, seven agencies came together under UNHCR leadership to really look at how we can make a difference in uh, that state. Mm. And we have been working there for uh, the past uh, two years and a half. And uh, we are bringing up uh, the expertise of WHO, UNICEF, UNESCO, ILO, UNDP, uh, UNODC, a very important uh, component, uh, and uh, uh, UNFPA on uh, sexual and reproductive health. And we are really trying to push as much as possible to really say, yes, the UN can come together and deliver results. And we are really quite happy that uh, today uh, things have improved seriously in terms of uh, in there is a serious increase in uh, the number of people uh, on treatment by uh, almost a 15% increase between uh, for the past two years. We are closer, uh, if you want, we are above the 80%. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, for prevention of child transmission, we are also above the 80%. And uh, uh, for uh, uh, age, uh, death, we are really pushing for it. That is something which uh, we are really hoping that we will mm -hmm. reach at least the 70% uh, before the end of the year. And in terms of new infections, we have uh, also close to 72% uh, reduction, which is uh, really exceptional. And uh, those are good examples which exist. And now uh, we are planning for the next two years to see how better we can expand it Gujarat. However, to take the good ex ex examples, the best practices from a Gujarat to over high burden state. And uh, that is something which we really are looking at. And especially if you want, we can, uh, look at to the neighboring states first, uh, let mm -hmm. us say Maharashtra and yes. Rajasthan, mm -hmm. and really see how the exportation can go, mm -hmm. uh, slowly but stepwise. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you go too much far away, uh, again, uh, the cost of uh, management will become bigger. Mm -hmm. Because if you go to from Gujarat to Rajasthan or Gujarat to Maharashtra, the cost is of, meaning really we want to minimize the management cost. Mm -hmm which is really important. And those are a few things which are there, which we are really pushing for. And in terms of new prevention measures, we are really looking at the pre-exposure pre prophylaxis, mm -hmm. really to push for that as much as uh, we can, to really make sure that uh, people are really uh, getting it. It can be two stepwise, meaning a uh, first step can be really to make the product available at the marketplace. And the second is really to help the government organize itself uh, to provide those services uh, to the people. And uh, that is the same thing with the self-testing. And uh, to really put in place a mechanism which can really help us to really uh, monitor it closely and make sure that the government will see where its money is going and uh, what impact it is achieving. So those are uh, areas which we really are looking at uh, very carefully in terms of really how to move forward. So that's where we are at, uh, and uh, we are uh, optimistic, even if uh, maybe we will not reach the 90-90-90 that 
that we will really at least get to the 80, 80, 80. Mm -hmm. And the whole question is now how to prepare ourselves for uh, the 2025 and uh, the 2030, uh, the 30. end of AIDS. And one thing which is certainly uh, important from my perspective is to really understand that uh, possibilities are here. Uh, India can make a difference. And uh, India is, I believe, ready to make a difference. And uh, there are new perspectives which we are really pushing for. One of them is uh, the convergence. It means simply that the TB program, the HIV program, the HEP pro C program, they have too many things in common. Why we cannot really get, at least at the field level, solid people who can provide those services, rather than uh, fragmenting ourselves so that you can go in the shop for your HIV issues, you can go in this over shop in your hepatitis issues, you can go. Again, it is a question of really preventing the loss of opportunities. And uh, we want, if you have a hepatitis uh, clinic somewhere, to be able to provide TB services, to be able to provide HIV services. And if you have any HIV services there, uh, to be able to really attend the two issues as well. At least, at least, because it is not useful for us to really try to send our patient left and right. Yeah. So it doesn't help the patient, it doesn't help us, yeah. because generally if you do it, between left and right, yeah. they are lost. Mm. So those are uh, issues which we really are uh, pushing for to see how better the government can uh, maybe introduce those um, uh, single uh, window approach where we can really get uh, what we want when you go. For a pregnant woman, what is important is to get all the services where she comes. Mm. Eh? You get everything, you go home, and uh, that's it. But if you have to go in one shop for syphilis testing, you go another shop for HIV testing, you have to go on another shop for anemia testing, you have to go for another shop, etc., etc. It is too much. So let us not get the specialist on our way. Uh, let us get really the public health expertise on our way. Let us use public health. Let us use common knowledge. Let us see how better we can improve the life of the patient. And that is critical because that's what can really help us as much as possible. And in many cases, why not? bring uh, If we can bring pizza to people at home, why we cannot bring them the medication? Mm. It's the same thing. Can we use the pizza uh, driver? Mm -hmm. Can we use the pizza, pizza uh, uh, the motor car? Mm -hmm. I don't know. There are many possibilities which are there. And we have really to look at those possibilities. Not to specialize too much uh, those issues, but really learn from what is working well. If you order your pizza in 10 minutes, it is there. Mm -hmm. It has to be the same as the medication. It has to be the same. So those are the changes which we really have to learn and uh, we have to use in public health and really to see how we can make uh, the better change uh, in the process. But I'm optimistic that uh, India can make a difference. And uh, as you may know, uh, India is among the countries which have uh, achieved uh, uh, the 85% uh, coverage of HIV TB, mm -hmm. which is a very good step in the right direction. But in terms of TB, TB itself, we really have a long way to mm -hmm. go. And we really have to learn from what we have used in uh, HIV to really address the TB issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will always remember when uh, in Nigeria we have really done uh, that strong convergence between HIV and TB, we were able actually to identify many people living with HIV AIDS and many people living with, uh, with TB because we are doing the double screening. Mm. The double screening mm. was the standard. Mm. So I think if we can do the same in India, we will. you cannot see a AIDS patient who will not be tested for TB. Mm. You cannot see a TB patient who cannot, who has, they have to be tested for HIV. So if we have that practice, mm. I'm quite sure that we will really identify a lot. Mm. Because we know, for example, in Nigeria, the one important, in the index testing, the one important element was if a child was identified with TB, mm. you go back in the family, you test the family members, you have three or four people who you can identify with mm. HIV. 
As I said again, it is not testing, but it is testing the right people. So if we do that, I'm quite sure that we will really move and move quickly. And uh, integrated services for uh, pregnant women, we have done it uh, again. The MNCH week, as they call it. And here we have, uh, uh, if you want, uh, the, the, the many opportunities which exist, which are looking at also uh, bringing services uh, in a uh, uh, campaign mode to people. The uh, 19th of every month for the Prime Minister Day is there. Why we not provide them? 11, 12 services to pregnant women, yeah? or women childbearing age, or children, because we have done it and it has shown the more you integrate, the more people accept to take the services, because they will have an understanding that your interest is not in one issue, mm -hmm. it is in multiple issues, it is about their health. Yes. They came to that conclusion easily. People are not stupid. Yes. People are really not stupid. But but if you have your AIDS agenda, mm -hmm. you will come and say, I will test you for HIV, I will test you for HIV. Mm -hmm. I mean, they will tell you why. But if you say, I have anemia test, I have um, uh, uh, HIV test, I have syphilis test, I have um, hemoglobin test, I have uh, etc., etc., mm -hmm. they will listen to you. And I have vitamins for you. A or a vitamin, I don't know, any of uh, the best, uh, or I have uh, iron for you. I have you, you have young children, yes, bring them. I have a, a deworming uh, medicine for them. Those are things which we really can learn from and really use. And that is the public health of the, the should be the public health of the 21st century. We cannot continue that mm -hmm. traditional way. And we have to really do that. And uh, as you have seen in the uh, conference, many people have spoken about this. We really should not lose opportunities. Yes. Opportunity lost, uh, it is a lot of cost. Mm -hmm. And we, as much as we can do to really provide services, at the right time, to the right people, we will win. Mm -hmm. And that is the way I believe the sustainable development goals can be achieved. You've raised yeah. so many important issues, Pilali, and uh, also about that uh, general health and general well-being approach yes. rather than exactly. talking of one particular exactly. disease. And I exactly. think that that will go a long way in, it is in uh, reducing stigma also. Exactly, when, exactly, yes. exactly. Yes. And uh, as I said, uh, if you come to see me, you are interested in your AIDS agenda. <laughs> I will look at you. Yes, yeah? yes. Or you are interested in your malaria agenda. I will yes. look at you. No, mm. I want all of this. Mm. And the reality is, people who are confronting one of those issues are confronting the rest of those issues. And public health has really told us that many times, mm -hmm. many times, many circumstances, many villages, many, uh, I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, cities, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. and those are the realities. Mm -hmm. So we have really to see how better mm -hmm. we can really improve those. Mm -hmm. And we can really help as much as we can to bring also public health closer to social protection programs. Because that is also very important. Because the poor is the most affected by many of those issues. Mm -hmm. And how we can help really people when they need it, is critical, and that's why I believe uh, we have a Diyushman Bharat, which exists. It is a very good uh, scheme, mm -hmm. but I want, as the communities have done with NACO, mm -hmm. that they own it. Mm -hmm. They yes. own it. Mm -hmm. They take it away mm -hmm. from the government. They take it away from uh, any ministry, mm -hmm. and they manage it properly. That's what has happened to NACO. Mm -hmm. When the government has put it in place, this community said yes. Mm -hmm. But we will own it. Mm -hmm. And when UNH was put in place, it is the same. The community said, I put you in place, I will own you. Mm -hmm. It is the only one, uh, if you want, I just see in the world which has a civil society in the, uh, its board. Mm -hmm. So the more you are closer to the communities, the better the outcome will be. Mm -hmm. And I want, and we are working with uh, WHO, to really, and the Minister of Health, to really see how better the universal health coverage will be a reality. And it can be a reality only. Mm -hmm when the community owns it. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot do anything in public health, be successful in public health without the community. Right. That is the reality, and that's why this year, the World Aids Day is about the communities, mm -hmm. and I'm very, very proud to say that uh, in India, the communities are really doing a lot, and uh, they know the reason why they're there. They know that they have to own their 
health, they know that they have to own their uh, economy, they know that they have to own their responsibilities. Political, economical, financial, etc., etc. And I'm very, very happy to see that positive position. And the UN as a whole has really a responsibility to help more, to really help more. Because when the communities are leading, things will happen. And that is the reality which uh, we have learned everywhere and we have to really continue and uh, especially in, uh, as I said in India, I have worked with for uh, the HIV Act, I have worked with the community for the end of the section 377, okay. I am still working with the community on uh, the TG bill mm -hmm. and uh, I am looking at also the decriminalization of uh, drug and drug use which is also an important step mm -hmm. which we have to really consider. But gender-based violence is a issue which we really have to consider as a country to really work on as much as possible because gender-based violence and HIV for uh, mental health issues are really related, etc., etc., and we really have to work together. As the sustainable development goals have been constructed, right. you cannot yes. solve one. We have to, exactly. Mm -hmm. We have to act together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It means that uh, it is not a question of environment only. Mm -hmm. Environment is about people. Yes. It is not a question about HIV only. Yeah. Only healthy people will develop a good environment. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I've seen it in um, in Africa, in Zambia mm -hmm. in 2000. Uh, I was there. Mm -hmm. I've seen how it was devastating the development. I've seen how it was devastating the villages. A village uh, where you have grandpa and uh, grandchildren. That village cannot build an environment, a uh, healthy environment, or uh, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Or uh, I don't know healthy food uh, production, yes. they cannot. So those are realities. So everything is really interlinked and everything is together. And that's the way we have really to look at if we have really to sustain uh, uh, the development. But the communities have to be at the center. And uh, that's what we have learned from HIV. When you put the communities at the center, you listen to them, they will help you to solve the problem. But if you believe you can do for the communities, you're wasting your time. You have to do with them, you have to work with them and listen to them because they know their problems more than anybody else. Yes. So those are realities which we really have to consider mm -hmm. as we are moving forward and I'm quite sure that uh, you will hear more from my side mm -hmm. within the UN, out of the UN, meaning uh, at the uh, Minister of Health level or uh, any ministry which uh, is engaged with us, mm -hmm. you will see really how better we can really get a good dialogue around the, the issues to really make sure that the UN is working as one, trying to answer to the problem as one. And the good case of Gujarat and HIV AIDS is a model mm -hmm. where UNODC mm -hmm. is working with WHO to provide uh, integrated uh, health services to prisoners. Mm -hmm. They are bringing uh, the harm reduction programs. WHO is bringing uh, the differentiated care model, the treatment of hepatitis, the treatment of TB, etc., etc. That's the way it has to be. And if you can do that, I'm quite sure that will make a difference. The impact will be bigger, quicker, and uh, the outcome will be really better. So that is the kind of approach we really have to look at as we are moving forward. But I'm quite optimistic with uh, the situation in India because there is an, at least an open dialogue. Mm. And there is a, a good uh, understanding uh, with, between um, different structures. And uh, I can give you the example of Niti Aok. Mm. We I was talking about district uh, approach. Mm. They are on the same uh, wavelength. They are discussing with us to say this is something which we can uh, use as a model mm to really see how yeah. to build from the ground. Okay. And that is really critical and really important. And we want really to encourage the government to continue that way and to encourage the community to get more involved in uh, the Ayushman Bharat and uh, take it, own it, be part of it, make sure it is going in the right direction. Because uh, as you know, we have seen uh, the Obamacare, we, we have seen, uh, I don't know, over healthcare in the world, but you look at two, the best, you will really find that it is where the community has a voice. Mm. When the community has a voice in anything, it will work well, mm. it will be sustained. But if you marginalize the community, you cannot do anything. Mm -hmm.
Uh, you mentioned about enabling laws, which is yeah. very important. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, we need an enabling environment yeah. for proper implementation of the laws. Yeah. Because uh, you have rightly said that laws on paper are just an empty victory. Yeah. So, um, uh, where, where do you think that uh, in India and elsewhere also, yeah. uh, we need that enabling environment for uh, implementation? You know, nobody will give you the enabling environment. Mm, okay. Okay? You have to fight for it. Okay. Nobody will give you a gift. Mm. You have to fight for it. Mm. That's why I said the community's involvement is critical. Mm. The community has to take those laws, mm. transform them, because they have been fighting for them for so long. Take them, mm. transform them into something to your benefit. Mm. Because that is what is critical. Mm. If you do that, you will get somewhere. Mm. But if you stay uh, at the level of uh, having the law, it is not enough. I will give you the example of uh, the HIV Act. Mm -hmm. When the HIV Act uh, came, we have started the discussion. We said, okay, let us see what could be done. NACO took the responsibility uh, with uh, UNDP and UNAIDS to do regional uh, dissemination or regional, uh, mm -hmm. if you want, uh, awareness building, mm -hmm. which is okay. Mm -hmm. but we were talking to the community. We were not talking to the decision maker. Or, no, mm -hmm. we were talking really to the community to say, this is what it means. Mm -hmm. And this is what it takes to really consider what you want to do. And uh, two weeks ago, I was with uh, this university, uh, uh, Haddad, mm -hmm. the university Jam Jama Haddad in uh, New Delhi, mm. which is looking also at the transgender issues. Mm. They have started the process and they want to really move as quickly as possible. I said, yes, that is a good idea. Let us look at what could be done. Mm. And uh, first of all, talk to the community, mm. bring them in. Mm. And if you do that, you will really reach somewhere. Mm. Number two, let us work together. You want a, a transgender center of excellence, which is a wonderful idea. We have to have one, at least, at least, because I was thinking every state has to have one, or every university has to have one. I said, let us see what could be the best way to really achieve that. Number two, let us still look at the transgender bill, because it is an important bill mm. which we have to work on together. And clearly, we came up with uh, five important areas mm which we have said to the transgender, focus your attention on those. Mm. And uh, make sure that in your discussion with the parliament, mm. the Lok Sabha, mm. you have really mm. to get those discussed as much mm. as possible. Mm. Continue talking about your issues. Mm. Flag them as much as possible. Mm. Push them as much as possible. Because you are the one who has the vote. You are the one who is going to vote people in. Mm. You are the one who is going to vote people out. And politicians understand that. And you are the one who can tell to I don't know, an administrator, we have enough of you. Mm. You can tell to a healthcare provider, we have enough of you. You are not performing well. Mm. Community-based monitoring is an, another system which we have used in India, a very good system which has helped the health system to really move forward. In HIV AIDS, we are doing it on a WhatsApp basis where uh, there is a stock out. Automatically, we receive uh, the information and we act on it. NACO has no other choice because it is known, it is on the open there. Mm. So, bottom line is that is the way we have really to push as much as possible as a community to create that environment. Mm. There is no other way. Mm. And we are the community to really sit down and say, we have this law, what are we doing about this law? And not to think that only you have the law, you have, uh, uh, I don't know, you have finished the job. That is the beginning. That's the beginning. It is the beginning. Mm -hmm. So you have fought for it. Mm -hmm. That is an achievement. You have the law. Now it is a new beginning. You have to really start thinking on how to really implement it as much as uh, possible and as quickly as possible in a comprehensive way, which can really help you as a community to move forward. Mm -hmm. And that is the way we can make change. Change comes only as uh, my uh, former president uh, for Burkina Faso has said it. Mm. Uh, the slave master will never liberate the slave. Mm. The slave has to liberate it, himself. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom no. line. Mm. You never come and say you are beautiful, I will liberate it. No, mm. you have to fight to liberate mm. your, that's mm. it. There is no other way. Mm. 
Creating the space is also that way. There is no gift. We have to fight for it, continue to discuss, continue to meet, continue to put pressure on our parliamentarian, our uh, leaders, etc. Et and uh, that is the way we will really get... Uh, and of course, the voice of the UN should really be there and to really help as much as uh, we can because we are about the UN rights, we are about social justice, we are about equality. And now we have really to demonstrate uh, and there is no other way. So bottom line is we have to really think about that. We are the one who can really create the space. We are the only one who have to occupy the space and we are the only one who have to, as community, to really make sure that what we have created, we are benefiting from it. Yes. Yep. Okay. Easier said than done. That is, that's not okay. <laughs> you have it takes it, time. Yes. It takes time. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah. I'm optimistic. Okay, huh, great. Yeah. It's it's yeah. really inspiring to yeah. listen from you. And yeah. you have worked in the field of uh, sexual and reproductive health also a yes. lot. Yeah. Uh, well, can you uh, share or something your experience from Africa and India regarding women yeah. in for HIV care and overall means where do they stand and what can we learn from each other? Because in India, uh, it's very often the health-seeking behavior of women is actually very low, not just for um, HIV, but generally. So. It is uh, painful, uh, I have really to say so. And uh, because if you go in a family, mm -hmm. who is the caregiver? Yes. Who is the caretaker? Mm -hmm. It is the woman. Yes. But it is because of that, that she cannot take care of herself. Mm -hmm. Because she's taking care of everybody. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is, we need to change that. We need to really to look at how better we will educate our uh, girls, we will educate our uh, women in a such a way that they will understand, not the extreme, uh, if you want, the feminism, which I don't believe in, mm. because I think a society is a man, a woman, and a gender, transgender. That is it. Yeah, bottom line, those three genders are there. We have to respect each other. We have to create space for each other first. And we have to really make sure that uh, we are protecting each other. And that is really, we are caring for each other. That is really very, very important. So the bottom line is, are, uh, if you want uh, educated, groomed in a such a way that if a child is sick, she's sick. If a, a, a husband is sick, Etc. Etc. I have grown in a family where my mom was uh, asthmatic, and I understand what it means when a, a mom is asthmatic, because the f whole family is paralyzed. Yes. But when my dad was sick, she was there, mm -hmm. and uh, she was making the family work. Mm -hmm. When I was sick, she was there. She was making the family work. But when she was sick, the family was completely. Par we didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So the point which is important into it is really to see how better mm -hmm. we can now. Uh, help each other. We can educate men, we can educate boys, we can educate girls, we can get educate women to really relook at to the norms which are here, which are really having a negative impact on women. And to really say, let us stop those. Let us try as much as possible to rethink a little bit how the relationship sh should be. That is critical. And if we do that, I'm quite sure that we'll get somewhere. And I believe it is important, and uh, any time I've, I've spoken about this issue, to really give an opportunity to women to go to school, to really learn. Give that opportunity, especially in the African context, an opportunity for women and girls to really learn, etc. And to the society, even women who have learned, who are graduated, who want to have children. From time to time, it is so difficult for them to really be a mother and uh, working in yes. that environment. So we have really to be a society which will create space for women who want to be a mother to be able to really to have a, a space for their children so that they can continue to be part of uh, uh, the market. And we have also to be clear even to get, a, as you say it in India, reservations. Mm. If you have a company, 
We want 50% of your uh, workers to be women. We want 50% to be men. Or we want 50%, I don't know, mm. uh, if you want uh, 30% men, 30%, uh, mm. I don't know. Mm. Anyway, for the three genders, we have to get quotations. Mm. And we have to really make sure that every single company, every single private sector company, governmental company, will really uh, uh, sector will take care of that into. I'm not saying let us do it tomorrow, mm -hmm. but we have really to think about it. And the UN is really doing it. Today, if you look at our structure, we went from 80% uh, men, mm -hmm. now we are at 50-50. So, we are really pushing for it as much as possible. It is not a question of, uh, but it is, it, of, I don't know, uh, we have a good heart for women. No, it is a question of justice. Okay. It is just a question mm -hmm. of social justice. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. And uh, we have to respect women as much as possible. That is critical. And uh, that's why I, I, I'm talking about yes. uh, uh, helping really women. Uh, because when I talk, I will give you the example of my aunt. Mm -hmm. When I was talking about uh, uh, myself and my wife, mm -hmm. she has a position. Mm -hmm. But when I look back, mm -hmm. she was struggling because... She had, uh, if you want, uh, over women because uh, my uh, uncle was uh, uh, polygamic, mm. and it was not easy for her. Mm. And she wants me to be polygamic. I told her, but it was not easy for you. Mm. Why you want to replicate that? Mm. No, you cannot ask those questions. Mm. That is the answer. But it is just a question of really how to look at the mentality, change them as much as possible, mm. and uh, to really see here or in Africa how we can really. Really think a little bit more mm -hmm. about the position of women in the society and how we can really respect women as much as possible. And now, uh, look at the religious considerations. I will not minimize them because, mm -hmm. uh, for example, in Islam, mm -hmm. I will give you that example. A woman cannot be an imam mm -hmm. in my context. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. those, those are things which mm -hmm. are there, which we really have to look at and go beyond. Yes. And because somewhere somebody has exploited something uh, which are not favorable for yes. women. Uh, I'm not, uh, I have not seen, I have I read the Quran, I have never seen in the Quran anywhere mm. that a woman cannot be imam. Yes, you're right. I have not seen it. Mm. There is no surat. Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm putting mm. my hand on, uh, yes. uh, I don't know. <laughs> so the point is simply that we have really to look at those issues as much as possible to see how we can really give space to women and girls. Mm. And uh, as I told to the president of Nigeria some times ago, you cannot be discriminating 50 to 1% of your population and pretend that you will develop. Mm. You cannot. Mm. You just cannot. You cannot marginalize 51% of your population mm. and pretend that you want to develop. Mm. Where are you going? Nowhere. Mm. And we have been in this for too long. Mm. So we have really to change and completely change and see how better we are talking about equality, we are talking about social justice, we are talking really about a new way of thinking about the relationship and the place of women in the society. Great, great very, very Thank inspiring you. and Thank you. Uh, very energizing also. Good. Um, Bilali, just uh, the last, your uh, message, it may be cliched, but your message for ECASA 2019 and for the World AIDS Day. Both are very fast approaching. Yes. Uh, I believe uh, ICASA is a, a good example of uh, what could be done uh, when pe good people come together with common interests and uh, common purpose, and uh, that is important. And uh, what I would like is uh, uh, to think differently a little bit, because from my perspective, I will come back to the, mm. uh, the, the, the SDGs again. Mm. From my perspective, HIV is a symptom. Mm. Somebody is infected with HIV. From my perspective, it is a symptom. What is behind that infection? Mm. Why that infection has occurred? Those are elements which we have really to take into consideration. And if you dig deep, you will certainly find the root causes. And those root causes are the one which we have really to tackle. You cannot treat a, you can treat a symptom, mm. but if you don't have the cause treated, you yes. will be treating forever. Never. And that is what I want uh, really for ICASA to understand mm. that clearly 
we cannot treat the symptom and believing that we will win. We cannot. We have to go deeper. And we have to put, give space to other people to participate who can add value. Because I want to prevent a young man in uh, Mizoram uh, from uh, getting into a child, uh, the drug use. Mm -hmm. I want to, uh, I don't know, protect a, a girl in uh, Lusaka uh, by sending her to school uh, from uh, early marriage. Those are critical issues which we have really to look at. It cannot be a room only for HIV AIDS because it will be a room for symptom. It will not be really a room for solution for the root cause. So my message is really clear. Let us go to the root cause while we are providing good quality services to the one who are having the issue. But let us focus our attention on uh, actually why, why why this infection has occurred, why this... If we don't do that, but if we want to be in the epidemic forever, if we can choose that, that is fine. But if we want to get out of the epidemic, we really have to focus our attention on the root cause. And uh, for the world today, uh, the, 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 the point is a very simple one. Uh, it is about the communities. And as I said, uh, and I will repeat it, I've really seen... Uh, changes from uh, coming from the communities. I've seen uh, revolutions coming from the community, transformations coming from the community, and I trust the community can play really an important role uh, in uh, this process. No success story in public health can be achieved without the community's input. Let us forget trying to do things for the communities. Let us be honest and do things with the community. That is critical. If we do that, we'll get somewhere. But if we go the way we have to do it for you, forget it. You will create a dependence forever. You will create, uh, I don't know, issues forever. But if you want to replicate yourself, you want to make yourself, uh, I don't know, depend I don't know how to say it, uh, indispensable. Yes, you can go that way. You as a person or you as an organization, et cetera, et cetera. But what we want is to solve problems. And what we want is to end AIDS. And if we want to end AIDS, we have to get the communities at the center of the action. We want to, the community to lead, and we want the community to really own this issue, continue to own it, especially in India, continue to own it, and really make a, a difference. That is my message uh, for uh, the World AIDS Day, and I wish uh, everybody the good celebrations. And uh, never forget that together we can make it. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, yep. Bilali. A pleasure. Friends, in this episode of CNS Dialogues for Sustainable Development, we were listening to Dr. Bilali Kamara, UNAIDS Country Head for India, on site from the 12th National Conference of the AIDS Society of India, taking place in Chennai. Thanks, and stay tuned for the next episode. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.